Okay, so I had a comment from Brian Thomas. Fantastic video, thank you for showing this to us. I'm wondering if you're able to install Reborn OS. And that was a question for the Orange Pi 5, uh, but it's not available for that board, but it is available for the Pi 4. So let's download it and give it a try. So Reborn OS. And we have a downloads page. So as always, you can download it for like a laptop, like a Windows laptop. But if I go to the ARM images, There's more support coming soon for other devices, but the Raspberry Pi one is always the first one to appear, which is great. Now if I scroll down, oh, that's just mirrors. So let's download the image. So 1.3 gig. Okay, so that's downloaded. So let's pop an SD card in. You can see that shows up and let's launch Imager. Choose OS, use custom, downloads. Reborn OS, choose storage, 16 gig, and hit right, and yes. One of the things I liked is that they're using the same desktop environment I use, KDE Plasma, which is just a great desktop environment. Okay, so that's all written, so let's hit continue, and shut this down, and I can unplug the SSD drive that I was running the other operating system from, Let's just switch off and switch on again and it will boot from the SD card. Okay, so that's all booted up fine first time. And we have this uh, pop-up that comes up, so install online, install offline. This is the sort of thing you get on an X64 and X86 device. You don't usually get this sort of thing on a Raspberry Pi because you're installing the operating system directly onto the device rather than using a USB to install it onto a hard drive or something. But let's have a look. So we've got install links, things like about us and website and so on. So that's useful to have. Utilities. Reborn OS believes in offering choices without bloating the user system. Consistent with this philosophy, most of the applications offered under utilities do not come pre-installed. That's fair enough. Clicking on one of the buttons under utilities will install the application if it's not installed already. So yeah, presentation looks good. Uh, if we go to their website, so Firefox is the browser. Oh, we have a connection failed. What happens if I just put in reborn? Ah, because my clock is wrong. Maybe that's why it didn't work. So we do the install offline option. The password, by the way, is reborn OS. So reborn OS is the username and the password is reborn OS by default. So installer, British English, location London. Let's create a password and it gives you options to let login automatically and require strong passwords. So I'm just going to hit next. Back to make changes to your disk in order to set up Reborn OS. You will not be able to undo these changes set up now. Okay, so it's not anything to do with like an X64 or X86 setup. It is just regionalizing it, setting the time and date, things like that. Beginner friendly, friendly and helpful community, live support on Discord based on Arch Linux. Ah, so Arch Linux. Reborn OS ARM has been installed on your computer. You may now restart your system. Restart. So I'm doing an update. Uh, it needed about 500 megabytes worth of updates. You can see it's just finishing it off now. Uh, and I've also asked it to install NeoFetch. The store uh, is under preferences. So preferences and add remove software. I like the keyboard that's installed in this. So under universal access, we've got onboard. And this has a keyboard, but loads of settings and loads of different things you can tweak. So you can see here, if we go into settings, uh, it will come up with this little window and we can do all sorts of things on here. So auto show when editing text, show floating icon when onboard is hidden. Uh, and sometimes you find that there are some symbols that aren't necessarily on a keyboard uh, or you're in the wrong language or something like that. And sometimes this can really come in handy. We've got various different things like transparency. We've got layout. So if we go full keyboard, what does that give me? Oh yeah, theme. I changed it, I think this was the standard one. No, it wasn't that one. I don't know which one it was. Oh, Classic Onboard? Yeah, it was that one. But I quite like the darker one. I think it stands out better. Uh, although that's quite cool, that ambience one. High contrast. So yeah, loads of things in here. I, I must uh, write that down because when I next do something with a touch screen, it will be handy to have that. Can we change the size? Oh, have we got... Okay, it's just as simple as that. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, like that. And just X to exit. A restart is required for the changes to take effect. Let's do that. And when we restart, we have the login screen. And you can see on here, uh, if I click on this, we can switch between OpenBox and LXQT Desktop. Has NeoFetch worked now? Let's try it. Okay, so Reborn OS, host Raspberry, kernel 5.15, running the desktop environment of LXQT with the window manager of OpenBox. And I guess they've probably gone with LXQT uh, just as a lighter a desktop environment, but I found that KDE Plasma works absolutely fine on here. Let's have a look at the web browser. It's not that quick loading up Firefox. I have launched it before. It's not the first time I'm launching it. Uh, so let's see, YouTube. I've already changed the clock once. I did it through this bit and it seems to have changed back for whatever reason. So date and time. It just needed to be today's date really. So 20th and okay. Right, now is it gonna let me in? It doesn't feel that snappy. I am running this from an SD card, but I often run uh, Raspberry Pi OS and also my build of KDE Plasma from an SD card and it definitely feels faster than this. But this could be a very early build. Uh, so it could be something that can be improved on. Right, let's have a look and see how well it plays 1080. Doesn't like the advert. And let's skip to 1080. And turn off. <laughs> Not good, hardware acceleration doesn't seem to be working in this at all. Uh, stats for nerds. Well, we can see that it's not, we can see it's not running. Okay, uh, so wait, so web browser needs a bit of work. Let's just try BBC Sport and Hot UK Deals. Just see how it loads up pages with, with uh, images on. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't feel that snappy. Mind you, it's not. Um, I haven't overclocked or anything like that. Uh, so I wonder if this is running at fifteen hundred or eighteen hundred. What have we got a config here? Let's have a look. Let's go in here. Boot and config.txt. Yeah, not a lot in there, and uh, oh, it's got the run as fast as firmware board allows, so that would mean that this Pi 4 would run at 1800 instead of the stock 1500. I do like the lock screen you get with this, so if we click on lock, you can see that it goes into some sort of screensaver, and it keeps, uh, here we go, so we've got like a swirly effect on here, but it seems to randomize it, so if I hit escape and log back in again, and then let's try that again. Yeah, so every time you, you log out, you get something different. And there's some cool ones. I'll run through a few of them. There's a different one, like Polaroid pictures. <laughs> God, that one's hard to watch. This one looks weird. Slow moving over the surface of the moon or something like that. Oh, and there's a star falling down there. Okay, so always nice to see another operating system on the Raspberry Pi. We are definitely spoilt for choice. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.